This is uh, Flora Asheri. Asheri, yes. Asheri. She is the motivator for this uh, workshop on political participation and stuff like that that we came for. So, Flora, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mm. So, what's the motivation behind this? Why did you decide to do this? Okay, so for years now, there's been underrepresentation of women, young people, persons with disability, in leadership position, in politics, in governance generally. And then we noticed that during election cycle, that is when this set of marginalized groups are relevant. So we are trying to change the status quo here. We want to see more women, more young persons, people living with disability, occupying leadership position. We want to see them becoming social mobilizers. The 2020 NSAS protest was a game changer for everyone. We saw youth in their number coming out because they saw a cause that they needed to fight for. And this is something we want to see, you know, being made relevant across all of our political processes. So the reason for driving this change, this cause, is to build the capacity of this marginalized set of persons and ensure that they begin to prove that they can also lead. Okay, um, this is funded by British government, you said? Uh, yes, this is a, a UK uh, funded program from the Office of um, the Foreign um, Commonwealth and Development Office. Okay, so and they're facilitated by SDM. Facilitated by SDM. So, can you tell us a little about what SDM does? Okay, so SDM, we are an international NGO. We've been in the Nigeria Delta for over 15 years now. Um, our thematic areas, you know, it's about governance, it's on security and civilization, it's on the environment, you know, and we also do work on economic diversification. So for us, what we normally do is to build the capacity of underrepresented people out of rich communities through right-based approach so that they can push for the change that they envision. Right. So a message to women, youths and physically challenged people before we go. Yes, I would like to put this as a call to action. Every young person, every woman out there, anybody living with disability, you have a huge role to play in governance. So it is high time you take your position and begin to be relevant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Laura. You're welcome. That's your that's your own so we can we can that's make sure it's you know we can we can come around it. Because what you say inclusion Inclusion for growth and inclusion for growth and Okay, we have two samples for our slogan. I know what is the same thing. Okay. Let's let's begin to wrap up. Less than one minute to go. Courage already has like two pages. Um, safe spaces where we can drive conversations um, with the use of the, the media, the conventional and new media, for the purpose of setting an agenda. As young people, we discuss and we identify our needs. We have a lot of people that are educated in university. 
But if you look around us, we don't have opportunities where we can be meaningfully engaged. And so part of the agenda we're setting is to ensure that whoever is coming out to represent us in any capacity from the local government to the state national assembly to the national assembly and to the government of the state, they must put our needs at the top of them. They must tell us how you create jobs for the senior youth of people that are not employed. But they will tell us how you will build our capacities so that we can also know how to fish and not to be living fish. Now, the next thing we will do is we will build capacity. Um, we expect that SDN cannot get all the youth of people state in a training like this. And so having participated in this training, part of what we do with building capacity is to go to our various corners and locations and we step down this training. We we'll gather our people in our communities and whatever we plan to do, we will share with them that they will know what we know and do what we are going to do. We also got a campaign against electoral violence and election malpractice. Electoral, elect, electoral violence and um, electoral malpractice is part of what um, discourages people from participating in the process. You know, um, I am a community leader, I am the chairman of the CDC of my community. During elections, you see our mother, you tell you, no offense, that you guys are the good guys, but there are some bad guys out there. We can't risk our life if we don't want to vote for somebody that will not even care for us after all. So we will not come in. So we want to use this, this platform to begin to let young people know that none of those things are what we as young people are supposed to be involved in. We are supposed to create a negative environment so that with our strength, whenever we start to support the person we come out as the winner in the election. Then finally, as young people this time around, we want to have unity of purpose. We want to be focused. So that nobody, no money back, can come and just give us peanuts and take us away from our path and our dream. We want to stand together, stand firm, and ensure that moving forward in all the elections, especially in 2023, whoever is going to represent us must come with us, must agree on our demands as the youth of the United States. Great youth of the United States. Great youth of the United States.